team fight. Um, you, you've got your structure damage. You just need something that, that slays, that can go to these lanes where you already have, you know, a fight dominant and just start something, get a skirmish going. You know, make OG play into your hands. It's like when you almost look towards the death prop, and then you're almost la layering like too many cooldowns. Answers, yeah, you, you cool need downs. something that is not long cooldown dependent. That's why I'm leaning towards uh, Lena, Lesh. Lesh would actually be really cool here, um, and Invoker. Last band still with Team Secret, though. And you gotta be afraid, I think, of your secret potentially of the Meepo last pick. <laughs> That's right. We I would not be surprised to we see. We have to remember the fifth picks. Yeah, I, I actually think that OG need that that weird hero to finish their lineup. I think Arc Warden, Alk, Meepo, or what they're looking at right now. Mm -hmm. Secret's gonna go for something a bit more standard, but probably just thinking, all right, what what win condition could OG take that would really annoy us? They banned the wow. Zeus in a terribly pick up from Team Secret. Very interesting. That's one uh, another Beastmaster counter, but now maybe a storm. I wouldn't mind that. Yeah, what are you? You, you, had, you had TA Monkey and Storm as the highest rated picks. I, TA, TA Monkey are, are not heroes here, but <laughs> uh, something. I mean, that makes the Arc Warden better. Right? Just saying, Arc Warden could be insane here mm. for OG. Very weird pick from Secret, though. But, uh, I'm surprised that they tried to double down. And I was just saying, I don't like more long cooldowns. They get another huge one. They actually go for the monkey. All right. They're probably thinking they also need some clearance for the TB illusions. And they're it's able lane to do that from range. Yeah, mm -hmm. lane dominator. And the movement ability, like that, that early rotation of OG to potentially gank hard will also be there for them. Huh. Best draft, Carl. I'm just afraid... Uh... It kind of comes down to like the relationship that Silencer has with this game. If OG get to a point where they're ahead, they've got like Manta BKB on the Terror Blade, and then that massive team fight, like they're just gonna win the game. Yep. If OG wants to take this, I think they're gonna have to play faster around the map. They're gonna need a significant advantage by the 15, 20 minute mark, and they've gotta be able to lean on that and their vision advantage and map mobility to kind of choke out Secret. If they don't do that, I think Secret takes this game. So you think yeah. that OG have to basically win in 30 minutes? Uh, well, they need, even they need to have a, a big advantage. If, the game, if it's even at 15, 20 minutes and like the towers are stable, then I'm giving it to Secret, no problem. Okay. All right, good stuff. Uh, time then, ladies and gentlemen, to get into our second series of the day. OG versus Secret. We've already had Team Liquid eliminated. Now, Team Secret are on the line here, and they've been the most dominant team this DPC season, matched up against an OG squad who have been on the rise lately, Blitz. Yeah, I feel like they're surging in the right direction. They've uh, got Anna back just in perfect time. Yep. It's one of the last tournaments where they're going to be able to get good practice in. And they this would seem be to be good... having uh, some fun times. Yeah, it'd be a good confidence booster, I think, for them, especially against Secret. And I feel like their lineup uh, enables their kind of play style. I mean, we already have the Tops and Monkey team, of course, but more like the, the fact that they've got these low cooldowns and Secret are definitely exposed in that regard. Very long cooldowns, Tide, Enigma. You've got the Terror Blade there as well. I feel like this could be an OG game where if they just play into their biggest strengths of just kind of like hitting you over and over and over again, they could definitely beat Secret in this first game. And you've got to be fast in this lineup. Yeah, Kyle said, uh, what, 15, 20 minutes? If they don't have a significant advantage on OG, then it's not looking good. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. I feel like uh, Secret's draft is very greedy. They have good late game. I think this is a very good ultra late game TB game, too. Uh, he has distance against the troll. You build items that give you space between. My friend Dodo's here in the crowd. He'd love playing in this TB game. I think it's once it gets to a certain point, you're going to think to yourself, like, this is a free TV game. But for OG, just put up the pressure, run at them as much as you possibly can, choke out the map, use the Beastmaster to sort of establish that presence.
The smoke up, getting some aggressive vision down there. He may actually try. <laughs> they really gonna go. They thought about it. Maybe diving for Nisha. That'd be crazy. We're just gonna split the bounty runes here, and we are gonna go for an aggro tri lane and some aggro chat wheel. And they tip each other as looks like it's gonna be set mid. Want to put the Monkey King against the TB? That pressure early on is. Oh yeah, he's oh, actually going to swap it entirely, and they're actually going to move Anna back up here, and they're going to make it so that the Monkey King, of course, is against the Tide. My mistake. Yeah, that's a that's a great matchup for sure. Yeah. And they put the Beastmaster against the Lone Druid, which I think is fine for Beastmaster. Oh yeah, and that and then the Lone Druid matchup is a lane that you can't actually win that well as Monkey King, right? Because the Lone Druid, the the bear, just serves as this. Yeah. Kind of barrier between you and the hero. Plus the uh, the fact that you can simply just fear him away when he does get too close. Like right. you have an instant reset mechanic. Uh, whereas, you know, Lone Druid versus Beastmaster. Beastmaster has the attack speed aura. He can summon his own minions to deal with your bear. It's a more even two on two at that point. And in the end, he could just keep on farming. Whereas him in the 1v1 against Tidehunter, he would actually suffer against that anchor smash spam. Yeah, he would straight up lose that matchup. Uh, but I do like how OG's doing things. I mean, this is always the the idea behind Secret, I think, is that Secret is naturally a greedy team. As Puppy, gonna get gone on, getting quite low, wants to try to trade He's out with No-Tail. first blood, Anna will! And No-Tail doesn't even die, really bait Secret out there. I have to say, it's kind of a cool choice, too. Goes for the Glyphs of Wisdom first. All that pure damage actually becoming rather effective even in harassing the high armor Terror Blade. And Zai in this bottom lane actually doing pretty well, considering I thought this is one of the worst matchups that you can get as No-Tail. The guy who, for me anyways, really popularized just suiciding your deaths away. Loves playing those heroes, loves playing those Baddens. Just gonna trade himself out, no real point being up here. As the Absor continues to greet it up, this is what you want in the laning phase if you're OG. Good lane matchups, early kills, Try to hit them where it hurts. Punish the fact that Yapsor can't make these same rotations without his Helm of Dom. I think uh, Zai's lane is only going well for like these first two levels. I imagine as you start getting more Jingu levels and the Jingu actually starts mattering when it comes to the damage. Because those first couple levels, you always feel like you can kind of fight the Monkey King, even if he does get the stacks up. You think he should just go for the cut? Uh, yeah, I think at this point. For sure. Yeah, and that's of course exactly the Monkey King for. just uh, keep tanking the wave. Radiant and that's going to be fine for the Monkey King, but Zai, I mean, he just doesn't want to be in a position where he has to one on one at this point. Yeah. Uh, he is past the point where he can fight and where his damage reduction is going to be useful. Meanwhile, up atop, Nisha also not having the easiest time, so inconceivably, they're winning two out of three lanes and doing very well in this mid one. It's already a good start for the OG squad, but of course, Team Secret have that extra position. They've got the four Enigma that is just farming up the jungle right now. So even if they do lose their lanes a bit, they always have that extra bit of farm. Nisha, though, can't afford to go down here. They aren't going to be able to get the shackles onto the troll. Nisha's going to turn around. He knows he's dead. Oh, he can't get too. away from Jerex, but he's just going to lose his captain as well as it seems. They're just going to dive him underneath this tower. A big win for OG. Minus two, minus two, and that does matter for this five position Shaman. Losing into early on like this. Oh, yeah. You don't have the best pull to work with to begin with. Only 303. He's already lost four int. Has had to buy two Ironwood branches. And not the easiest start for them. And this is, I mean, for Secret, you know, no surprise faces here. You have to anticipate, like, this sort of had to be the game plan when you picked this greedy. Yeah. I love that they actually uh, they got some aggressive vision down, actually blocking one of the camps because they know that these heroes, Jarex, suiciding to the tier two, they know these heroes, Terrorblade, Enigma, they're going to utilize the jungle heavily. So if they can start taking some of that away, whether it's taking oh, early Nisha's powers, gonna Nisha really is low. probably going to die here again. Is they're just going to chase him down? That one last shot for No Tail. Now the shackles doesn't matter as it goes away, and it just beats Puppy down as well. That's another two. Ten intelligence already for No Tail. Dude, that's pretty massive. As No Tail looks like he wants to die, and in fact, just going to use the rest 
the dregs of his mana left. At this point, OG, you thinking about uh, swapping things up, like you pop the five minute shrine and then you just TP the, the Tidehunter up here. Do you want to TP troll down to bottom lane? Uh, yeah, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Why put your troll in a rough position whatsoever? Like they're having success in this lane. Uh, just continue to hit back, follow Nisha around. Make life as miserable as possible for him. They really got all four bounties, huh? Yeah, and I mean, this Terrorblade, only level three. Conceivably, if he was like level five, uh, you can just go jungle. But there's somebody in your jungle already. You have Yapsor that says like, get out of here, I own this spot. Yeah, Yapsor is not ready to leave that field just yet. Only has the Arcane Boots. Uh, is going to be working for a fast mech rather than a Helma Dominator. And Puppy with 291 mana now. It cost him 240 for one Ether Shock and Shackles, so... Deb's gonna play a little bit of jungle time, leaving that top lane abandoned for now. Monkey King is making his way up there, though. But every minute that nothing is happening, uh, for Secret, that's, you know, that's breathing room. You're gonna take that at this point, because... You have to make space for a lot of heroes right now on the map. Yeah. Seb gonna go for that super fast Vlad's. Not even stopping for uh, boots. Vlad's and, and maybe uh, straight into a Medallion of Courage. So he's gonna go for the Minus Armor right away. I do like that he's not going for the Necro Book. Uh, I think it's more important for him to be able to put pressure and enable his other two cores. Yeah. You're not you're not the hard care here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> uh, Damn, that was in unison. That was a well done crowd. Oh yeah, UK crowds, man. They don't shirk when it comes to the chance. Set. Root it up. The boar's gonna be able to help him out. He's actually forced to use the primal roar now. He's thinking about trying to kill that bear, but it's a little bit too low to fight right now. He doesn't necessarily have to go back to base because of Vlad's. He can maybe lifesteal off of some neutrals before returning to lane. That's precisely what he's going to do thanks to that medium camp that's right next to that mid lane. One of those nice little advantages for Radiant side. See, surprisingly though, Secret are bringing back the net worth. He stopped it. Oh, he oh, caught the right tree. He found them. They're gonna roll on in, trying to stop the shackles. The Ravage does go down. Now they follow up with the shackles, making sure this monkey gang can't get off too much. He finally gets off the boundless strike. They couldn't actually hit him with the anchor smash, and he's gonna be able to jump away. They blew so much for that. No tail, dove into mid lane. At least Secret will get that much, and maybe they'll get Jerex as well. He does have a rolling boulder, but the Malphite is causing him some issues, and now with the Aether Shock. He'll be finished up. So two actually going down from OG. What a disaster it would have been for OG if they had lost the Monkey King as well. Still, that was probably best case scenario. Yeah. You didn't lose your Monkey King who has quite the lead right now. Third in net worth. Plus you got the Ravage used without any objectives being taken. Top is under so I obviously thought they'd have enough damage as mid one's going to switch into the melee form, get a little bit tankier. Step, trying to win the regen battle right now through the Vlads, but the bear hurts. Top tower yeah, it's managed top to push away that bear. And now they can start getting some solid damage on that tier one tower. Jarek's even joining here. They're gonna TP in the Tide Hunter. Wanting to really make sure, but actually Seth running into the Enigma, but Nisha's right next to him. They kick off through. Thompson's gonna run in, boundless strike, finish up that Enigma. And now try and fight underneath the Wukong's man. It's only physical damage, and he's got that extra bit of armor, but he's getting so low that eventually he will fall here. Looks like he just maybe uh, overestimated how much damage they have, thinking that the 12 bonus armor he gets off of Wukong's command would allow him to fight longer. Yeah, it was just more the fact that everyone was there. Yeah. Hitting on him, and he didn't really have backup. His No-Tail only level 4, no global silence on him or anything. Or Spirit only level 3. It's funny, Seb was probably thinking the same thing that you were. You got a Tidehunter and Enigma, but you can't both be in the same place. Secret apparently disagreeing. What a stat. Puppy has so many more wins over No Tail. Ah, that's including some of the old fanatic days. Mm, true, true. Puppy's always had good squads. Yeah, Puppy has always been like, except for maybe like that. What was it Ti Six EG or Ti Six Secret Squad? 
Mid of bounties. You almost had that. COG managed to grab four of them last time, and they seem to be in really good position to be They're able to get, get three again. or four. Anna single-handedly takes all that. That's what's eight going in a on. Row. Secret, how do you just give those away? That's a lot of gold. They would be pretty even in net worth otherwise. I mean, it's just surprising to me that OG feels like that they're controlling so much of this game, and yet, uh, like, I just keep watching the net worth dip back Maybe into Secret's favor time. over time. Yeah, I guess now because the they farm the jungle so efficient. It's just the nature of their lineup, right? Yeah. They have an illusion-based hero, one that literally creates money uh, in the Enigma. And Tidehunter can push out waves very safely. They don't really have the burst on the side of OG, no Silver Edge to break. So Zai's got a relatively free game. And, and again, with every minute that passes, Secret's lineup gets stronger and stronger. They haven't lost any towers, really. They're uh, about to start accelerating even faster as mid one finishes up the hand of Midas. The best part about this tide in this game, I think what sort of saves Secret's lineup is that he can't get bursted, so he can just sit there yeah. in front of towers. Uh, notice that he always goes into high priority target towers. Like he TP'd mid, which is what started all that. Right. Uh, then they just sort of ignore him. They went for Yapsor instead. He TP's top. Sav doesn't really have a place to go. He's sort of just being trailed by this tide hunter. Plus, the Lone Druid's a similar hero. He can just pull back the creep wave using his uh, bear, just reset things, and just buy time right now. Yeah, that's why OG, despite the fact that they had pretty much a four versus five for the laning phase and were doing quite well for themselves, they have yet to take a single tier one. I mean, it's, it's always so easy to talk about. It's like, oh, well, they're a greedy team. Just sort of punish their greed, but easier said than done. Hobson's. Chased away. So what o does OG? Do they need to commit more heroes to lane that the Tidehunter's not at and just go for it? Go for a smoke gank, get a kill, push the tower. Do we need to try and wrap on mid one, somehow kill him with your spirit? They do have the gold of silence available now, so they should have some of the tools at least. To kill one of these cores. And they've got global, they've got roar, they have good team fight. I think they should look for a fight towards mid lane. That's where they're headed to with their smoke. They're gonna Dyer's sit behind Seb. Is under attack. He's gonna try and deal with the bear first. They're healing oh. himself, the roll on in, but all these secret heroes are here. Jerex has actually dove in really deep, and they're gonna pop the global silence, but they're still gonna be able to get the kill onto the air spirit. And maybe no tail as well as he's slowed down by the gush. Puppy is a bit far away though. That was pretty disastrous. Yeah. And secret at that point where they see global silence is used, they could just go for it in the mid lane. They could take the mid tower so quickly, thanks to the fact they have a low druid. Yeah, they've got Ravage too. This is the opposite of what they wanted to happen. They were hoping to find a pick off on mid one and taking the mid tower themselves, and instead, secret. I, again, it comes down to this tide hunter and just being able to sit himself in front of lanes. He's like this immovable target that you just can't really go on at this point. Radiant OG, they're realizing it's under attack. much more difficult than just simply running at towers. Yeah, this, first this is was... just going to create space for Nisha, who goes down to this bottom lane. I mean, he'll eventually catch up. That's the nature of Terrorblade. Off that tower gold, they now have a mech on the Enigma, so our team fight becomes significantly better for Team Secret than it was before. We, we have yet to see the uh, the big impact of uh, Thompson since the last time he just kind of jumped in the middle of all those secret heroes. He's now made a rotation up to top lane. And Yapsor, he smoked up. He's going to get spotted here. The ward is laid out. But again, just not easy heroes to go on. Does manage to get no tail with the ensnare, but Seb and Thompson, they can both go for mid one here potentially. Seb is actually just going to back up with the silencer, but Tom is fully committed. At the same time, they're going to be able to get the ramp and the control with the black hole, the top of two of those cores. Now the troll's not going to die right away, but he's been feared up immediately after they managed to chain the CC very nicely to make sure there's no battle trance opportunity. Did you see that Seb just like he just backed up with no tail. Meanwhile, the other two cores went in. There just seemed to be a disagreement about what they wanted to do with that fight. I mean, I think that Seb had the right idea there. They're not winning that fight. Yeah, you just... Lone Druid is so hard to kill for them. And so is Tidehunter. And as soon as Tide comes up there with his Ravage, you have lost any chance of winning that fight, especially when you don't have Global Silence. Yapsor still has 
his ultimate. They might even go for Roshan here. They've got uh, Shaman Wards. They can continue to just get a gold lead. All right, well, apparently Team Secret didn't need the uh, the five and 10 minute bounties because at 15 minutes, they'll get three of them. Bottom tower is under I see here again, no tills already at half HP. And Anna just, you know, he runs in following Thompson's lead. This is twice now that Thompson's aggression on the Monkey King has come back to bite him. It's Yapsor's positioning in the team fight. Mm. Like Seb doesn't want to use Roar on him because he knows he has to use it on one of the cores. And so Yapsor just stands there at the bottom. He's like, come in, you're, you're a melee hero. You will get, you will get uh, Black Hold with the rest of your team. You're not bursting him. And every single time Team Secret Defends a tower successfully. They in turn manage to take the opposing tower. It's just a weird position. The secret is just letting OG base check into them. Yeah. And they're being patient, so they're not wasting time. And they're doing this all without Nisha, who, like I talked about, I, he was third from the bottom in net worth not even five minutes ago, and now he's third overall. He's definitely very heavily recovered his net worth position. And if you're OG, the reason why you have to do this is, well, it's sort of like how your lineup works. Yeah. You were meant to win these fights early on. You have a Beastmaster as one of your cores, a uh, lot less greedy, doesn't get a Midas or anything like that. Surrounded here, he has to go for the Primal Roar onto the bear just to make sure he doesn't get ensnared. Right, and it seems like the fights are only going to get harder. Yeah, I think so right? too. Because we're now getting all these various team fight items. First it was Blads, then it was the Mech. Uh, now I think I saw a Hood of Defiance for Zai, so. They're going to be able to catch Seb here with the Serpent Wards. Nobody's around to be able to save him. There is going to be Global Silence actually with the base boots. He doesn't even have to kill the Serpent Wards to get out of that trap, but still, something was forced. OG. They manage to force the Titan to rotation, so I was going to ask you, what if they make some sort of faint play where they, they make, they force Secret to go, oh, they're pushing this tower, let's TB defend, and then they go to the other side of the map. Yeah, that's one way to do it. We'll see if it actually works for them, though, because they may not be pushing into a Tide Hunter, but they're still a lone Druid. This is their old school combo, right? All right, there you guys go. It's just beautiful. It really is. You can tell the players you can hear it too. Six to seven, 4,000 net worth lead and just continues to climb for Team Secret. And Remember during it was like TI six times, that was like their death lineup. It would be Tide Enigma or yeah. Secret. Yep, it was yep. when they had like Misery and he just played Tide every game. It's like that was the combo. Give it to them, you'll lose. And they're bringing it back old school here. And that was referred to as like this ultimate high ground defense. It was super hard to, to fight into even as you got BKBs, like you could still lose fights. And here Team Secret is utilizing that defense and defending tier ones. So this is like tier one is, as it sounds, it's the first step. OG is supposed to have gotten all the tier ones by now. And then they're supposed to be focusing on tier twos, get Roshan, then go for the high ground. It feels like their whole entire game plan has been entirely stalled up. Yeah. The good news for their lineup, though, is that uh, because, and this sounds weird, but like because Secret has so many cores, okay. uh, it does mean that Anna just, I mean, he's got more to farm, right? That is the upside here is that unlike Secret, who has to split like the entirety of the jungle and okay. lane creeps, you have Anna who just, uh, he gets all of it. Everything is Anna's. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I can kind of get behind that. Are scanning. I don't, I don't know if, uh, I need to, I guess the problem for me is they have such good counters to the troll, right? All three of their cores counter the troll in some way, right? You've got Tidehunter who's naturally tanky and lowers the, the troll's damage. You've got this uh, high armor TB who can also hey, once pretty gets, easily get his ultimate off and sunder. Once he gets BKB, life gets easier because he can't get rooted. Yeah. And uh, Puppy just sort of becomes... Right, Puppy's just gonna run at him. This is, I feel like I've seen this before. Again, there goes Global Silence again. Yes, that was deja vu. This is, literally looked like a replay. I, I just saw this exact same <laughs> sequence of events. And then they all started spamming Seb. Thank you. One thing that didn't happen though, 
Last time, Team was... Secret didn't just funnel into the Roshan pit super fast. That was so weird, right? Like, I... Yeah, dude. Uh, uh... Oh, the roll! Oh, did he get it? He got a dick! He kicks these out in the pit and snatches up the Aegis! He's very likely gonna die here, of course, but that was still sick. He managed somehow to get out of the pit, but that was amazing. That was... That's the second Age of Steel that we've seen just today alone. Oh, Sai, Sai, he knows what you're up to. He knows that you're trying to TP way inside of these trees. And now Anna, can he do it? He's really quick. He is very fast, but where's he really gonna go? Oh, he would, he, okay. he didn't come he comes down. back through, but yeah, is here. There is also Seb with the Primal Roar, but now it's only Seb. The rest of his team is still a little bit too far away. They're smoking it. Here comes Seb Wukong's man with a boundless strike onto three, trying to get up the Jinku stack. Skid, it's off a of mid one. Thompson's actually plenty healthy thanks to Lifesteal. Poppy, he's a little bit low, but does manage to get out of the Wukong's command. No Tail trying to finish him up to make sure they admit there is no disables on top of Thompson. But now the Black the Hole gets the both, and they will be able to get those disables out to finish off that Monkey King and Seb slowed down. Jarex tries to come in to bail out his team like he just did inside the Roshan pit, but Team Secret, all low, but all alive. And you saw that mad scramble. They understand there's only one way they can lose that team fight, and they're gonna get around on Jarex. He wanted to make it all five. That's gonna be the complete team wipe. I mean, has No-Tail gotten any int since he racked up that 10? No, he is not. No. He bought a very ambitious Null Talisman. My game's great, guys. Blitz, this is feeling like the antithesis of the Liquid game too, right? Liquid go through, they're this demolishing force that's taking every single tower here. It's the opposite. Team Secret's just the unbreakable wall. And the game just becomes more and more one-sided as OG run into that wall, fail to break it, and just make Secret stronger as a result. Oh man, they are all so low, and every single time I can't help but thinking like Thompson, feeling compelled because the, the way the uh, fight's always breaking out, he has to throw out the Boundless Strike first. Not having it later on to the fight just costs him several kills. Still see smiles. As they're finally gonna claim this mid tier one tower, that'll be all the outer tier one towers now taken. But we just expected it so much earlier. Yeah, we see how swiftly the GG bet odds have uh, have changed. OG do take that tier one tower, and they're pushing kind of for more because they know no Anna's black got hole, no ravage, and it does have a BKB as well. He wants to tries to jump to the back line, but a blink away from Yaptor. He's able to get a Wukong span surrounding Puppy. Puppy just going to throw out the Surfer Mords. Immediately, there's going to be the Global Silence to make sure there's going to be no ravages. It just came up. Zai, he's trying to get out of the pit. He does have the ravage. He wants to fall at the last second. He's just going to be able to he's get the ravage, and they're keeping Anna dead. He do manage to bring him down. He stays alive, and now look for the chase as Seb. Trying to get away from Poppy, a good kick from the Earth Spirit will slow him down, but Yapsar didn't get hit by that. He's got a Blink Dagger, he's gonna spot Seb. Doesn't no. have the stun up in time, though. And that half second that Jerex made him stutter step buys him just enough time, and honestly, that was not the worst fight. That was about as good as it gets for OG right there. They forced the buyback, they got a core kill, they did lose their troll in their 10 second BKB, but... With the net worth disadvantage that they have, you expect that fight to be a lot more one-sided. Yeah. I mean, it could have been a little bit better if they had somehow finished off the tide. Yes. He doesn't get out the Ravage, then Troll survives. They probably take the tier two as a result. I mean, it was so close. Good read on Zod. It was. I almost thought that he was just going to be like, oh, this is a lost fight. I don't want to blow Ravage in a lost fight. No, he was waiting for as long as he could yeah. for the Troll to be off. You saw that? I think Seb roared him as well. They were just trying to keep him locked up because they understood they were conditioned to win in that fight. Yeah. Just don't let him ravage. Bottom tower has fallen. Puppy has a Ghost Scepter, but should go down here. Thai says goodbye. Captain Puppy. CTP is away. Thompson now on a killing spree, and he's done a very admirable job with this net worth, too. It's just, I mean, look at the difference between the Enigma or position and the Beastmaster was mid. This is sort of Seb's role in the game though. Like we talked about, his item build was not geared towards splitting the map like we see normal Beastmasters do. Right. We saw him earlier in the tournament go for the Necro 3 and just dominate. This time around, he's had to just switch gears and make it so that his troll 
protected as much as possible. He's purchased the Vlads, the Solar Crest. Matt's been so much of OG's bread and butter is these, you know, these offlaners that can get a bunch of team fight items for OG. He even goes for the Solar Crest to amplify the damage of the troll or the Monkey King. You see something similar out of Zai here. Crazy part is I could still sort of see a way in which OG can win. Yeah. I mean, the Dota Plus odds don't put it too far out there. It's like 85% to yeah. the favor of Team Secret. I say that's about right. You could see the glimmer of how they can win a team fight. Yeah. When they properly throw down the global and they're unable to help mid one. There's no four staffs or anything yet. <laughs> what? Uh, Yapsor is building an Octarine core. Of course. Third item. You think he would see that last fight and we wanted to say, hey guys, if I had like one four staff to get out of the boot pungs old, yeah, yeah, I yeah, probably could yeah. live. <laughs> I'm like thinking about so many like mid-game-ish items that would be good for you. I understand that he doesn't want to go BKB He's facing up against the silencer, but yeah, and Beastmaster. Like a four staff would do wonders for you here. They do manage to catch Seb in the mid lane, surrounding him with surfboards. This time around, there is no global silence to use. And indeed, yes. Seb is dead. See those guys? Those are the real troopers. The rest of you guys who just kind of like level twenty thousand <laughs> battle passes out there. All right. Well, just like last time, we get some sort of pickoff. We're gonna go for a tower. They very quickly take it. Wow. Now they're ripping apart a tier three. Look at this. He can't actually make it back to the base in time. Puppy and Yapsor. They spotted him thanks to some very aggressive vision they had. Then there's gonna be the global silence. Anna now gonna be forced upon the battle trance. Is gonna be able to turn on the puppy. Gets the ghost scepter off. Turns on Anisha next. Eventually that battle trance is gonna wear off and Anna's gonna try to get back to the high ground. But he's gonna be slowed down by the Gavage. Does have a Ravage ready to go, but doesn't even need it at this point. So Thompson lets out the Wukong Span. Puppy Trying to get it out of it. Zai also, he throws out the Ravage just to be able to kill that silencer and slow down Thompson, but eventually he will die here. Give it the Jingu Sacks to Thompson as well, which will allow Thompson to fight up against mid one spare if he wants to. That's still too dead. Yapsor. Now there's very little for him to worry about. Still has the black hole as Nisha. Just gonna take the tower with his illusion. I mean, it's crazy to me that all those abilities were used. They lost their Tidehunter and they thought about just pushing for more objectives after taking a tier three to melee racks in mid take a tier three bottom they can hit shrine no they're not back they're on the hunt right now they're gonna be able to catch puppy nice combo is really anything matters at this point yeah. OG is far behind enough that you'll take it and that's gonna be a Rax and the bottom lane opened up as well You'll take every little bit that you can get, yes, but how much? How many little bits does OG need to be able to come back into this game? They would need two successful team fights in a row, like big ones. And this oh, might just start here. Pick off on Nisha would be massive. Pops the Manta. They need the roar. Far away. They do manage to get the silence, but no primal roar. Continue oh, to run. No. Out, but that's going to be the opportunity for the Sunder. Thompson again just seems to be a, a little bit of a difference between him and Seb's idea about that fight. I think he thought if he kept running, if TB turned around, he was going to get Primal Lord before the Sunder went off. Jesus. Or no tell. It's a butterfly already. And oh, just the spot. timing. All right. All right. Well, it couldn't be easier for Secret at this point. And, uh, the I AC, mean, Solar Crest, there's so much minus armor. I, they see it, they know about it. Yeah, is Anna gonna try and run in there? Tops is gonna jump into the tree. Seth's gonna reveal some heroes. Seth's managed to get the Prime Roar into the Enigma with the Wukong span out, and Anna in there with the Battle Trance as well. Good use for the Sunder from Nisha. Now the Black Hole! Oh, they're all managed to catch three! They do manage to cancel something, but still, Anna's gonna fall on Tops to try to stay alive inside the pit. Who's grabbed the Aegis, and he's gonna be able to come back alive here. But a setup from Team Secret, they're immediately gonna go on to him again, not letting him jump into the trees. He's dead for 100 seconds, and Jerex, who rolled on top of Zai to try and help his carries, he'll die here as well. This is looking grim for OG as Team Secret, given how fast they can take these buildings. 60 seconds on a troll and 80 seconds on a Monkey King. They could definitely take the Ancient in that short of time. Yeah, that was the buyback on all these heroes. 
17k. The creeps have already taken the mid racks for them. And march on down towards the bottom one. The good news for OG, if there is any, is that uh, unless Secret decide to go for the throne, they do still have a tier 2 tower up at top. But imagine that uh, Secret, they can just take all the shrines now. <laughs> this is the same team that... Uh... How long was that game? 75 minutes? Yes. We had like four Aghanim Scepters or something that they took away from Roshan. This is the same team that secured their victory in a way I don't think I've ever seen any team do before. So I'm not surprised they didn't try and go for a fast thrown push. Two lanes of barracks. They've got this game pretty well in the bag. There is the third item, Octarine Core, for the app stores and Ignite. He's going to go for the refresher so that the first time he gets canceled by a global Loads up the second one. Wouldn't you just get Refresher in the first place instead of Octarine? No, oh, dude. <laughs> what do you want from me? Hey, well, now he's got an Arcane Rune as well. Zai's been pinging it out for him. He wants to try to match up the timing, right? Yeah. Just wait. So is he, if he picks it up right before 32 minutes, are they going to give it to Nisha instead? Okay. That works. Uh, it probably makes more sense. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, sure, dude. I'm leaving that for you, no problem. <laughs> Definitely didn't want that for myself. Anna, Serpent Ward's out. Oh, Thompson's kind of jumping in, managed to jump back into the trees right before the they damage to get came out. down. Someone's getting rooted. I mean, Midwan is going to eventually root somebody. Anna pops his BKB. He cannot afford to pop the Battle Trance. Otherwise, he'll be pulled back into the danger zone. Yapsor actually... He didn't have hole, but... Uh, tower is under attack. No tail. What a, what a bluff. Just ran forward and uh, without global, I think you just go for it. Yeah. They don't have creeps, though. Does it really matter to this Terrorblade with an Arcane Rune? Any excuse to pop the Metamorphosis? Is there any lane that's going to be pushing in soon? It's a long time for those creeps that are at the very top part of the map right now. Slowly making their way. Coming soon to try and bake, break the uh, backdoor protection. Meanwhile, on the side, OG is trying to... They have to try and get into the back line, right? They have to stop the app store now that they don't have a global silence to rely on. Team Secret back up, just playing that high ground area we've seen so many teams do. When they're in control on Dire Sign, make sure to get the vision on top of the cliff, oh, defend they... it. They're looking for a and He wants a fast pick up on Puppy. Good force staff. Gets out of the Wukong's command. Now Ghost Scepter as well. And he then turns around to get some disables off into the back line, though. It's going to be the Earth Spirit just trying to get damage onto the Enigma. He's sure still alive. The black hole. There is going to be the Ravage down. The Fear away. Unable to get off the Battle Trance. Multiple buybacks coming out from OG now as they're going to be run down by Team Secret one by one. It's going to be No Tail first. Thompson potentially next. Or instead, they're going to just turn and take Seb into Anna's their own running hands. In. Anna trying to run in for second they do have the long jump in from thompson who spotted a very low hp puppy who somehow is still alive through all this one but can't get him and uh there's nothing they can do at this point oh gee just <laughs> a celebratory flag hole from yapsor as they know i mean team secret just handled og in so many ways this game that was so methodical and it all comes down to the draft where they picked this Tidehunter, this Lone Druid, two heroes that they know. Yep. Even though they're greedier, you can't really...